Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Mahmoud. Uh, this is the second day of the step-by-step uh, -step video of deploying a high available and scalable SP.NET hosting environment. And the very first uh, video was all about uh, deploying an AD, uh, configuring it, uh, and then configure the DNS and deploy two clients from the scratch from uh, creating a VM and then step-by-step. -step. This is the task uh, we have completed so far, the first video. And for the second day video, uh, these are the tasks I have uh, created. Okay, if you go one by one, just creating, from creating the VM, deploying the Windows Server, then uh, DN, uh, join with AD, and then install DFS, IS, and NBL services, then test form client, and same goes for AR, ARRB, the second VM. Then DFS configuration from the AD points, and after DFS configuration, uh, do a replication test, and that's it. That's it for today. Error install and configure the error because uh, we need uh, the server from up and running. So this configuration will be uh, shifted to the next uh, third video, third day video, uh, which will be on the server from. So that's it pretty much, and a little about the hardware. I'm using Dell Xperia 15 laptop. It has uh, 7 i core processor quad core and uh, 32 gb of ram i hope uh, the missing will sustain because uh, there will be lots of vm lots of cores and uh, lots of ram will be used and also we're going to use some uh, load test on the list. okay now uh, let's jump on to the scenario so we have client a client b uh, both are shut down it is up and running and this is the user we have created a user uh, app admin with two member uh, role one is domain user and domain admin user these are the clients just normal domain uh, domain user so here we go uh, let's start creating the vm workstation for fitting for next these are the limitations go next uh, yeah i will create the operating system later on after configuration and ch change the few settings next it will be a windows uh, microsoft windows and 2012 server okay here i'm naming it error a now i'm selecting a, a location where uh, the vm files will be stored create a folder error a and in advance i'm creating another folder for error b which will be needed very, uh, very soon. So I'm selecting area for this one. Next, BIOS, yes, next. Uh, number of process and number of core. I'm not changing anything because if it is required, I can change it even after uh, you know, VM configuration, even after uh, deploying the Windows Server. So I'm moving forward. Next, to GPF RAM. No problem. Uh, NAT, yes. Uh, I'm selecting the NAT because uh, when I'll be configuring and join with the AD, I have to uh, give a static IP to the uh, VMs. The static IP I have this here. You see, there are two NICAD required uh, one for uh, LAN, another for we'll be using for NBL purpose. So, next. Okay, yes, um, sticking with 40 GB, single file. Okay, this is the hard disk VM for ARRA. So now, customization. The very few things I do not need are the sound card. Let's remove it, the printer, remove it, and I'm going to add a network adapter. One for uh, LAN, another for NBL. For the timing, I'm not changing any any settings. Um, sticking with the default because uh, I'll be changing after the installation. This is the CD-ROM, and I'll be I'll show the from where to load the image ISO file. I've downloaded a copy from uh, Microsoft official sites. It's a data center evolution uh, version of 2016 server. Close. Finish. So here is the settings of our VM, and it's uh, we can power it down. Okay, let's power it down. 
I'm closing the other tabs, client A B, not triggered right now, so I'm closing it. Okay. In the meanwhile, uh, while it's getting prepared for installation process, uh, let me create another uh, VM for ARRB. I'm not changing anything, just next, 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 by default, it's selecting the oh, previous configuration. Now here, ARRB. And we have already created a folder for ARRB. I'm just browsing to that one, ARRB, next, 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 next. Next, next, next. Uh, 40 GB. What is slow? The hard disk, virtual hard disk. Error B. Save. Next. Customization just like the uh, previous one. Error A. Remove. And remove. Let's add a network adapter. New CD uh, to load the OS. Windows 2016 server, close, finish. Okay, power it on. Now go back to uh, ARA. Okay, this is I'm not changing anything. I know settings, game of settings, whatever it is, uh, just keep it, uh, as it is. Next, install now. The same thing, I'm not changing any, any settings. Next, install now. Okay, uh, yes, I do agree. Next, hard disk. I have only one hard disk, so by default it, it's been selected. Next, now wait. Same goes for ARB. Okay, this might, uh, this might take a few while, so what I'll do, um, I'm pausing the video. When it is, uh, uh, when it is done, and then it's gonna take a reboot, and we're gonna come back after the reboot. So here yeah, we are asking for uh, credentials for the administrator. I'm giving the same old credential that we have used earlier. Finish. Same goes for ERB. Finish. Okay. What we're gonna do? We're gonna first uh, adjust the screen uh, display driver. So I'm pushing the uh, mounting the VM tools in the virtual CD ROM. So it's done. Uh, let's finish. We can ask for a reboot. Yes. While it's taking a uh, restart, uh, let's move to server B, error B, and I'll do the same here. Finish, uh, we start. Okay, now I'm going back to ARA. The server is ready. Okay, let's log in with the local administrator account. Okay, let's have a look at the plan. So this is the day two, and we're going to complete this task. Both nickel. Both nickel. Okay. Let's start one by one. K 
here you can see Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. So I'm renaming it for better understanding NVL. One NICAD will be used for the LAN as it is and uh, one NICAD will be used for the NVL purpose. So let's configure. Go to right button, then go to properties, then TCP IP properties. Okay. Here I'm going to assign the IP as per plan, like 23 and 24 for ARRA. Our DNS, it is a very small nitrogen, drop on 68, drop on 10. Rinse. So, one IP configuration done, next. Ah, uh, no, the NVL one. Twenty-three, twenty-four. I'm not going to set up the default gateway or the DNS. I'm not going to change anything. Let's uh, disable it. Okay. So our network configuration is done. Now let's rename the PC and try to join this PC with the AD. Here, okay. Domain run lab. Now we're gonna join this computer with the domain. <coughs> to do that, you need administrative privilege. I'm giving administrator password, username, and password. Let's not wait and move to ARB. Now wait and let's get back to our ARA. So here is the welcome message. Welcome to the round lab domain. Okay. Okay. And okay. So to restart the computer must apply these changes. Okay. Yes, I don't want to restart. Okay, let it come back and let's go to ARB. Still we are here. It's okay done. Okay, close, now restart. If you press Ultra Control Delete, you will notice a, a bit change. Like here is another option to lock for other user. Let's click, and here is the sign in to the domain. So you, you can, you want to sign in with a local account, you select the first one. And if you go with the domain account, you select the second one. So we have created our account, which is app admin at the ID. If you if you follow the first if you have followed the first video, we have created the app admin account with uh, app admin named app admin. It uh, it has two role. Uh, one is for its uh, domain user, and another one is it is has domain admin privilege. So let's log in. 
this is the first time you know, we are using our domain account so the display driver needs to be reinitialized we're not going to install rather it will uh, give us a prompt whether we want to sign off and then update the driver and then again sign in let's wait for a while okay here yes okay this is a look domain account So ARA has successfully joined and uh, now let's check with the ARB. No, the display has been set. Okay. Now let's go to AD and see uh, there will be some changes. In the donors last uh, last video this was our host entry a tag and can be if i do give a refresh ARA and arb both as a new entry and also in the reverse zone if you give a refresh you will find it ARA and arb so let's start the clients because we will be doing some tests okay clients here and plan b So now get back to ARA and let's see oh, what are the tasks pending. Uh, yes, done, 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 done. Now we're going to install the DFS and IS, DFS and Envil services. This is a record for on the both ARA and also on ARB. So let's go to client there. I'm opening the common prompt. I want to see whether uh, the client here can resolve the name. So it's showing timeout. Let's check one thing. Windows firewall. Um, I'm gonna uh, turn a few things on and off. Let's turn off this one and go to client here and do a test. So the name has been resolved. The IP it's on the IP. So the DNS is working fine. Let's turn it on again. So now the services open the server manager this is the place uh, from where you can uh, add the roles features also remove role features add servers and manage pro servers properties so let's add role next the role we're going to add here is uh, the dfs name application namespace and application so uh, it's showing that it has some uh, other roles features also need to be installed because they are dependent uh, yes add features dfs application okay now here is our is i'm selecting ls management from record add features i'm going to move to next http activation related add features uh, http activation And go down uh, load balancing add features now these are the sub content I'm selecting all the sub roles uh, features 
for IS. Without the FTP. Because I do not need this FTP services here. Not even in the future. There are some services we are not going to use. But uh, we are going to uh, use them in the future. Uh, just in case. I am selecting. So go next. Uh, these are the list of services and uh, roles and features we will install. Uh, let's install. I'm not going to wait here. Uh, I'm going to move to uh, error B and do the same. Going back to error A. Now wait for the features to install. So installation has been completed successfully. Let's close this. Okay. Now one by one, what is the service we have installed? We have installed uh, DFS. Then we have installed IS. And we have installed the load balancing, network load balancing manager. Okay, now let's start with IS. I'm going to pair it with the, to the taskbar because we're going to use this IS, IS very frequently. So, here's the structure. We have this error, the up and root service running. Under this, we have application folder, and we have a site folder. And under the site folder, we have only one default site up running. The same. I'm closing this one. Let's move to client A and do a little test. Open the transfer. Now, at the transfer, let's type error a dot one light dot local. So, the service is uh, by default, and uh, this is the default uh, page. You should be the is. This page will appear. So your IS server is up and running. Now let's move to B and from client B I'm gonna test the ARB. Both the IS is working fine. Now what we will do, we're gonna create a notepad with name as default. Now we're going to change the extension. To HTM. Then we're going to copy the HTM file to the DF tree where default website is pointing. Let's explore from here. Now, going back to client A and reload. Now, our page is showing. So, it's uh, it's uh, configured as a default, default document. If you select the sites, and here's the default document, if you click it, this will be the default documents uh, will be shown if you send a request to this address. So I'll be doing the same for on the app here the eyes up and running and Okay, let's move forward. Now 
what we will do next. Let's configure the load balancing. Minimize, close, open the server balancer on the tools, select network load balancer. This is the balance manager. Uh, basically uh, what it does, it creates a cluster and it balances the request load on the two on the clusters. It could be uh, one or it could be more than one clusters under a single group. So let's create a cluster. Uh, I'm adding a host. Our host is here, uh, the first host I'm going to add. Run lab dot local. Let's connect. So there are the two NIC card uh, identified. I'm going to select the NVL one. Next, no change. The host IP, and it is the priority one. Already started. Uh, I'm keeping it as a started. Next. Okay. What will be the cluster virtual IP? Okay. I'm going to give an IP uh, 192.168.1.20. This IP will be shared in between the cluster ho cluster hosts. Next, I'm going to name it as web dot app dot local multicast. Next, edit. I'm not going to select all the range, I'm going to select 80 to 80. Uh, multi host because there will be more than one host. And regarding the affinity, uh, you can, if you want to know regarding the affinity, uh, let me give a little brief about the affinity. Affinity is the uh, policy how the request will be handled. Like, uh, if you request, let's move to the picture. If you request from client A to client B, if the affinity is set, set to none, it can go to any host, depending on the balancer. If it's uh, single, that means when the, once the client is uh, served from the error A, it will always be served from the error A. This is uh, one of the requirements when you when you work with the session. If you, if the application has session. So if you have to maintain the session throughout the for a, for a specific request, a specific sequence of requests, then it's better to move it to a single. Right now I'm selecting none because I have no session states dependency and uh, whatsoever. So I'm selecting none. Anyone can serve. Okay, the load will be equal. Port on both 80 to 80 and mode is multiple. So this is the uh, configuration. Finish. So this cluster group has uh, one cluster host added. Now just in pending steps, let's add another host to this cluster. Our second host, v dot one lab dot local connect. Selecting the NBL, next, as it is, unique identifier. Every host will have a unique identifier. This is derived from the first policy we have defined for the, uh, the for this cluster specifically. Finish. Here we can uh, we can do one thing. We can uh, we can in the port rule we can add more than one rule for a single cluster group. Okay. Fresh. So error A has been uh, confessed. So both are up and running the load balance. Okay. Let's do a host entry in our domain. The web dot one lab dot local with twenty. So I'm going to add a host in the forward lookup. 
tele host web 192.168.1.20 add host done <coughs> so what happens uh, right now I'm not going to use their direct uh, direct access I'm going to use a uh, web dot final dot local so this is your array uh, refresh 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 same I'm going to find B on the web dot web dot run lab dot local again this is from client serving from array this one is also serving from error if you do a uh, uh, quite few more time you can see that there will be a switching from A to B let's still serving from error now it's moved. See the uh, sorry, the serving uh, the server has been moved to error B. Now it's serving from error B. So this is how the cluster is balancing the load in between uh, these two hosts. Now our next task is application folder structure. Okay. Application for the structure is uh, DFS basically a uh, distributed file system. It's basically used to synchronize one folders one file or content from one Location to another location. It, it's replicates. What we going to re replicate here? We're gonna uh, rep Replicates we're gonna create a folder under the inet pub and then uh, we're gonna create a two folder uh, under that uh, those two folder content needs to be replicated because we will be sharing configuration from IS uh, error and automatically this configuration file has to be uh, replicated to error B where error B's IS will load in the configuration from that folder. So let's see uh, error V host. We are creating a folder, then another folder configs another folder sites so here it is hmm. config and sites now I'm going to uh, give some permission and I'm going to share it go to folder properties then uh, sharing then go to advanced sharing share this folder permission uh, no, we're going to customize it. So removing the everyone from the list. I'm selecting app add admin full full control. Then administrator with full control. Then system with full control. These three are uh, basically the members of domain. Then I'm going to add another uh, from the local server and this would be is user with full control so first step down second step security here i'm going to add uh, from a user from the local server the basically i'm going to add the is user with default set of permission close then I'm going to do the same, exact same, at B. Done. Now I'm going back to A. I'm going to take this default. I'm going to cut this page and move to site done
and now we're going to open the IS and we're going to change the default folder structure of the default site. Select this one, the basic settings. This is the default where it's pointing. I'm going to change it to this chart, folder. I'm going to connect, uh, give a specific user. Credentials to validate and address this folder. Let's test. Okay, fine, good to go. Done. I'm going to do the same thing here. Done. Now, uh, from the clients, let's do a test. Still working, so it's this. This request has been served from IRB, and for client B, this request has been served from uh, IRA. Now, our DFS folder structure is ready. Let's configure the DFS. I'm closing this window. This window. From any uh, tool, some of another tool, then DFS management. We took part in the DFS, the namespace, and the replication. This this is uh, default replications uh, setup on system uh, volume. Okay. To start the DFS, first of all, we need a namespace. As there is there is no namespace is uh, not configured yet, so let's configure a namespace. Where the namespace will be hosted, I want it uh, this namespace to be hosted at AD, the domain controller. And this namespace would be our lab namespace. I'm going to customize the uh, permission. I'm not going to use this settings for everyone, rather, I'm going to add a few selected user group from the domain. That's all. Now, move to next. Yes, it would be a domain based namespace. Next. Great. Okay. We have created the namespace successfully with the wizard. Let's close the wizard. So, here is the namespace. When you create a namespace, uh, it creates a folder. If you go to root primary drive, this is the DFS root, and this is your namespace. So it's currently empty. Let's add a folder group. New folder. I'm going to name it error shared. The target folder. Browse. I'm selecting error. It's searching for the shared folders. So this is the shared folder. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to add another folder from ERB. Okay, okay. Uh, so we're gonna let me show you. Okay, yes, this is how how it was. Okay, you do you have a folder structure, but they will not be synchronized unless you create a replication group and start the service. Okay, uh, yes, I want to create an application group right now. It's going to take a while to validate its uh, permission and folder structures and a few other stuff. No. Okay, it's the replication group name. I'm not going to change our replicated folder name. I'm not going to change. Next. These are the two folders will be replicated in between. How? Uh, okay, the primary member will be RRA. Next, okay, this is the uh, this is the policy of re replication. Either we're gonna go for mesh or not no to topology. Uh, this one is uh, not basically disable uh, because it's it's more than two half to 
configure this uh, topology we're gonna go for a full mesh and vice versa uh, any change at error a will be uh, replicated to error b any change in the error at error b will be replicated to error a let's move next I'm not worried about the full, uh, bandwidth because my content will be very uh, hardly of uh, kilobytes, so I'm not worried about. It. But if you have uh, to, if you have uh, large content to be replicated, he needs to configure its how many bandwidth it's going to use from your LAN. So here is the configuration where you can do that. I'm selecting full, next, create, close. Okay not a big deal so here is an application group uh, under one structure let's you can do I'll just give a rest help it's ready let's log in Let's go to the ARB. <coughs> no, let's move to error back to error A and let's create a text file. Okay, well, from where I'm copying this one and I'm pasting at the root of our DFS folder. Continue. Okay, now I'm going to error B. Aha, there it is. See, so it's been replicated from ERA to ERB. What if if I copy it here and paste it here? I want to see if the full mesh is working or not. Let's move to ERA, back to ERA. See? It's... So now, right now, I'm going to delete these two files. And they will be automatically deleted from the ERB also. So, this is how uh, the DFS works. Now from client A, let's do a test. Run lab dot local. See the uh, folder structure, but I'll not be able to uh, access it because I don't have permission. Let's try with app admin with username and password. This is here shared. Let's move config. Yes. So from clients, uh, you can access this, but if you have given the permission. So this is how it works. The DFS. Now let's get back to our task. Let's see what we have completed. Okay. So, uh, from client A, I'm going to open a browser. Let's see how it is working. If we type web dot run lab dot local, it is from error A, and also this one is from error A. Basically, this is not from error A. Uh, what we have uh, done, we have Put the uh, file here. This is ARA uh, hosted page. If you open it from with the notebook, notepad, it says this is from ARA. Okay, if I move to ARB, that file has been replicated here also. ARA. So both are same. DFS R is working fine not the biggest one I mean just a small copy paste it here here this is has been taking effect let's see how 
where we, it's been updated or not. Yes, it's also an updated version. So uh, this is how your works. Uh, why we need the DFS? Because uh, when we're gonna share the configuration in between two server, we're gonna use uh, the DFS to replicate one configuration to uh, to another server. So that's why we have a plan to implement the DFS here. Okay. So we have uh, IS and a few things left. Uh, these are the things left for uh, uh, basically the, the, these tasks are related with the server farm because unless we have uh, a server farm ready, we'll not be able to test the error properly. We can install it, but if you need to configure it, uh, you have to attach the server uh, server farm. Okay, this is the big picture okay we're gonna we, we have configured these uh, dfs and load balance and is okay what left the air the request routing basically we we can uh, install it but uh, we cannot uh, configure it because to configure the error we need the server from so i'm i'm putting this out uh, the air configuration uh, for the third day where we're gonna create a server uh, Again, uh, we're gonna DFS in between these two uh, server, and then we will in install the error at error A and error B, and then we're gonna co configure it uh, the requ request routing, and we're gonna test it after that. So uh, that's all for today. Hope uh, if you have any comment or any suggestion or any question in mind, just uh, drop by and uh, just write it down. Uh, if you want to see the third video, please do subscribe because you will be getting a notification from the YouTube. You'll be publishing the third video. So that's all for today. Uh, hope you get idea uh, on how to configure IS DFS step by step. If you want to know more uh, regarding the IS, DFS, or, or whatever, or whatever the vendors uh, has uh, Microsoft, so you can always go for uh, docs.microsoft.com, uh, where you can search for a specific keyword, like NBL 2016. You can uh, see how how they are, they have recommended, and also you can Google it. Go ahead, uh, try out, and. See, see if you can uh, do something uh, do share because uh, we are here to share our thoughts and learn from each other and thank you that's all hope to see you on uh, third day